What is your first reaction to receiving a chain letter in the mail? Are you curious? Do you follow the directions because you're afraid to break the, the American chain? American Music Show, trash like a piece season of junk? 14, show 8, The Cooking Show, taped March 4th in a kitchen to be shown. I can't read that date because there's a Coke can there. I'm real sorry. But it's 1985, whatever that date is. I sure don't know, and I can't read that next line either. I sure can't tell what that is. How do you but I'll tell you, that's Dolores French right on the TV, baby, and she's got street savvy. Uh, to be shown March 6, 1985. 1985 copyright, the American Music Show. Brought to you by your co host, Dick Richards and Potsy Duncan. Duncan, through the magic of television and Bud Lowry. Tonight, featuring the happy cooker. Hook them with your cooking. Bring in your favorite recipes, cooking tips, and household hints. From your, from our kitchen to yours, plus many, 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 many surprises. We're devoting our whole show tonight to cooking. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. We're going to be sharing with you some of our food. favorite recipes. And uh, one of the people that I know you saw in the news last week uh, is our special guest tonight. It's the Happy Cooker. And she's going to be preparing some special recipes uh, for us tonight. There she is over there getting all ready. Do, do you know, I, I hope she doesn't have any deep fat frying recipes she's cooking tonight, does she? Any deep fat frying? Now, I was just hoping that you weren't going to because I was afraid you might injure yourself. I ain't heard of the deep fat fry. How do you do that? Just deep, anything deep fat fried, like fried chicken or french fried potatoes or something. I was just no, afraid of grease splatter. Okay, yeah, we really, our insurance coverage is not real good here, and I just didn't want us to have it splatter claim against us. Sudan has got the famine. Djibouti's got the famine. Zimbabwe's got the famine. Eyes grow dim, stomachs brown. Can't do nothing but lay on the ground. Patsy, the rec recipes I've picked out are Thank That's you, Lady Claire. Uh, the recipes I've picked out are for men and designed uh -huh. for men who don't have much time. You know, mm -hmm. maybe their wives have left them, mm -hmm. uh, run off with somebody else, or maybe they're busy dating and going to a lot of parties or working mm -hmm. hard, just all kinds of stuff. And they don't have much time for cooking. So these are some recipes, I've, since I don't have much time for cooking either. Mm -hmm. Other so reasons. You've probably drawn on your own experience. Uh, for right. I have made these two recipes. The first is for. Uh, what I call an Insta cake. And this Ooh. is going to be an Insta pound cake. And what you do is you take a package of any kind of yellow cake mix. I see you, you've chosen the generic model. Right, because it really doesn't matter when you're making the Insta cake. Well, and yeah, uh, cake a lot of people don't like realize that. that the only difference between a yellow cake and a pound cake is that a pound cake has lemon in it. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. So I didn't do, know that. You dump it here in the blender because it takes so, so much less time. Mm -hmm. Put nope. in two wedges of lemons. Uh, this recipe calls for two eggs. Should I do anything about this water that's Well, the to boiling boil? water over there, Putsy, you can go get because that's the secret of the Insta Kit. Ooh, well, I'll go get that. everything there into the sink because you're in a hurry and what you do is you take I can see why this is a recipe the appropriate for amount of uh, boiling water and put it into the blender turn it on high nothing seems to be happening Dick. I can see why this is for men, because I think it's kind of dangerous and requires a strong hand and a certain amount of confidence around boiling water. And Patsy, as you can see, there's steam coming from the top of the blender. I and see that. And that's the reason is because the cake has already started cooking. Oh. Now. That saves many hours of cooking mm -hmm. time. You pour it into your pan. Mm -hmm. That looks just great. And put it in an oven at 350 degrees. 350. Did everyone get that? That was 350 degrees. Now, the main difference, an ordinary cake 
takes between 20 and 30 minutes. But since we use boiling water as to mix our ingredients, this will take between three and five minutes. Oh, that's exciting. So you don't even need a microwave oven to be able to cook that quickly. No, you don't, and which gives us time for pre prepare my next item, which oh, is farmer's great. market cheese. Ooh. Now, you're gonna use, we're going to use the same blender, and that takes the, the most time. Let me wash out the blender. Okay. So is there anything, anything that we needed to tell the audience and the viewers while you were cleaning that out, Dick? I guess not. Um, well, we'll have more recipes coming up later in the show. I think Dick is just oh, about done. Well, Patsy, I think this washing out the blender has taken longer than I thought, and the cake is already ready. Let me oh, go get Oh, gosh. Ooh, Ooh that is lovely. And um, while I'm making this next item, there's a lovely cake. Ooh. Why don't you serve this to our official food tester tonight, Tom Zarell? Okay, I certainly will. You yeah, can you also. Can, I make think you should be tasting as we go. Faster so method that I'm going to show you, you like right now. Utensil? Now, Patsy, mm -hmm. what you do for this, for farmers market cheese, is you take one cup of either two percent milk or mm -hmm. whole homogenized milk. So it really doesn't right make here. any difference. No, it doesn't make any use. difference at all. That's good to know. Because a lot Put of it into the it blender does. and to that you, a cup of milk, you add one package of lemon jello. Mmm, sounds great, Dick. So this is a real quickie recipe too, right? Right, but unlike making regular jello in which you add sugar, into this you add a dash of salt. Yeah, so there's, there's some kind of chemical reaction going on here, right? Is that what it is? You mix it thoroughly with your blender. Be careful not to overmix. Mm -hmm. And then you bake it, put it here into this uh, little container that I've constructed out of an ordinary egg carton. Oh, that's a handy household hint there, Dick, um, so that you don't even need to use a pan that you're going to have to wash later on. No, you anything. can just you construct just your very own little cheese mold. So could you, double, could you double the recipe and use the whole thing? Well, you could double the recipe and make use two or three of them. Mm -hmm. But well, you I just need so that a cheese, a block of you, cheese this yeah. long will be a little cumbersome on a tape. Yeah, I just thought that maybe some of our viewers wouldn't want to get into the Oops. cutting and taping. But that's kind of why I was concerned, Dick. Um, I think the cutting and well, taping part of it. I was in a hurry, and if you have to be more careful, but what you do is you take this and then you put it into the fridge. So now how long will this recipe take, Dick? Well, this recipe takes overnight, but I wanted to show you some of the cheese you can Ooh. come out with. It's lovely cheese. It looks just, just like, like what that. you get in the store. That's amazing. It even has the same kind of texture and ridges that cheese that's been wrapped in plastic has. Right. This is the same kind of cheese you can get at the farmer's market, but you can make it yourself at home mm -hmm. and your using ordinary milk and a package of lemon jello. I never knew that, Dick. This is just a revelation to so me. So let's it's take amazing. it back to Tom Zarelli, and he I'll can taste that. that. Right and then him. coming up next on the American Music Show, we're going to go into the kitchen with that happy cooker Here you go, herself. Tom. This one looks great. Of course, now this one was made last night. She's got some great recipes, so stay tuned. And, and one thing I wanted to tell y'all out there is that, you know, this cooking show, anybody can do it. You don't have to be a prostitute. You don't have to be, you know, anybody. You, you can be a man. You can be anybody. Just cooking for somebody that you care about and love, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter if you just met them yesterday. You can still care about them and love. And what I want to say is, like, you know, I think, I think that anybody can do this. And it's very simple to do. And it just share a little love because that's all the world is. And if you can't do that, then you can't do nothing about it and you know it must be true so what are you gonna do but sing along too and this is a song that Paul Burke and I wrote and right now I want to sing it for all those people way over there in Africa who tonight are going with no food 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 it's a barren desert with nothing but dry grass and all the people I was just going to give you a little quick tip, and the Hi. happy cooker is joining me. 
um, a little quick tip while Dick's catching his breath is that I realize a lot of our viewers are younger, just a, a slightly younger generation than some of us, and may have been raised in homes that only had automatic ice makers. So yeah. I was going to give a real quick lesson on how to make ice manually. Um, That's this, really important. I forgot. It is. I mean, a lot of kids, you know, move away from home and they've been raised with ice makers and they don't even know what an ice cube tray looks like. That's right. So this is the tray. I do, though. I know. Now, they come in a variety of forms. There are also some older metal ones. You're not as likely to run into those. Um, most of the ones you, you know, even what you might get with a low budget refrigerator, you probably get this type of thing and it's plastic and bins and stuff. So the metal ones are real hard to use. They get frozen solid and you gotta be real strong and stuff. It used to be where you got the man of the house to do that because he was real strong and you stood by and said, Oh, you do that so good, you've got you're so strong. You've got so many muscles. But this kind of way, you know, even girls can do it. So if you're single and stuff and you want to be doing that when there's no men around, you know, that's okay too. Now this is where you get the water is right out of the sink. It's not like your parents' refrigerators, which has the water running directly into the freezer. You do have to just fill it up right at the sink and you fill, fill each little compartment up, as you can see here. Separate line. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you kind of like them not to be so high that they run up into this area right here where there's a little lower place because then it's harder to get the ice out because you do have to twist mm -hmm. it and get it out when it's frozen. That's right. But that's the part you got to remember is you put it in the refrigerator mm, anywhere from, you know, a couple hours to a couple days depending on the type of refrigerator you might have in your rented apartment. Um, and then you take it out when you want to use it and you have to remove it from the freezer and twist and turn and pop the cubes out. And this can be, you know, cumbersome and unwieldy right. sometimes, but that's just the price you pay not now, having I'll tell you, Trey Cossie, that you obviously have been doing real good here, and, and you know, I, I had a hard time doing it to begin with, and you may too, is when you stick it under the faucet, you don't have to stick each individual one of these. You can fill it up all the way so it'll run into all of them, mm -hmm. and then kind of mm -hmm. dump a little bit out. That's right. You know, it's easier and faster, quick mm -hmm. method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it can be real time consuming, filling it is. each right. one, so then it just goes right into the freezer. And see, the trick is, it's the reason, you know, like you may not understand this, but you might spill it, and that's why they made the automatic ice maker, but you really don't need that. Mm -hmm. You don't. I mean, it's, this is a little more trouble, but, you know, not as expensive, and sometimes it's just necessary once you get out on your own and you're living in rented places right. that, you know, you don't have your parents' freezer, I mean, a refrigerator and access to it. Here's skills. Dick. It was well, a great song, Dick. We all oh, enjoyed it. Thanks, us. thanks, and I, I enjoyed your ice cube tips. Because I think that there are a lot of young people who fortunately get to have automatic ice makers because of our so prosperous. Mm -hmm. That's true, but you know, I just we want to appeal to everybody. But uh, the final recipe we have tonight also involves an ice tray, and it involves okay. that. You know, I know you have dogs too mm -hmm. at home, and you never know what to do with the old dog food that the dogs it's have not true. eaten for supper. Look at it; it's just so messy and feels so like foam rubber. This is, rubber this is almost. like the dry food, but you've moistened this it. This is the dry food, but I moistened it a little bit. Did you overfeed them, or why is there all this extra food there? Well, sometimes they don't eat all of it. Yeah, the they just they dogs they get moody sometimes. Oh, really? My kids mm -hmm. don't do that too often, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Dogs are different. So this is a recipe for turning those le that leftover dog food into doggy treats. Oh, great! So uh, maybe, Lady, Lady Claire, you can hold this microphone for me because you you hold stuff so Thank sensitively. You. Thank you. So it's true. What you do is you take a little bit of your leftover alpha dog food or whatever kind you feed mm -hmm. the dogs and put it in your the blender. The blender, that's great. Now I notice, Dick, you don't even have to completely clean out your blender from the last time No, you not for doggy it. treats because dogs don't care what they mm -hmm. They probably like the I extra put it about flavor. That much. And then it needs some kind of liquid to it, so I have this old flat Coca-Cola. Oh, so what a, a treat. Trish. Mm -hmm. I bet these dogs are going to love this. Ooh, yum, yum, yum. And then, of course, is the secret ingredient that you add to all doggy treats. Ooh. Granulated sugar. So I always like to add, oh, about two to one. So I think I've got one cup of Alpo in there, so I'm gonna add two cups of sugar. That's great. I know Grace would love this. Mm, she always gets I know I'd love with sugar this. in So you put that all in there, and Put your blender top and, you know, just blend it thoroughly. So you don't have to cook it or anything? You just mix it up no, in the blender? No, you just mix it up. It's getting good and gooey. 
Ooh, yum, yum, yum. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't that look good? Oh, that looks delicious. Ooh. It does. I know those dogs are going to love that. And when you you know it's been completely ground, you, I mean, you know, blended, you turn off your blender, and then I always just make mine. I think this makes such a handy size for doggy snacks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good use, additional use of the ice cube tray. Just pour that all in there. So once again, you don't have to fill each cube no, separately. No, not for the dogs. Kind of do not care. Mm -hmm. And uh, Patsy, I've got, or and Lady Claire, I've got some doggy treats here. So let's bring Ooh. the dogs in and see how much they liked them. Okay, Pup, great. pups, Barker, Hoka. Come on, Barker. It's time for a doggy snack. Come on, come on. I see. Here come the doggies. Let's see. Do you all like right to feed them? Who wants a doggy snack? Oh, Who wants a doggy snack? Stand up. Stand up. Come on, Barker. Barker, Barker come on over. Here you go, Hoka. Hoka. Oh, they really love those. Look how they just wolf them down. Yeah, yeah. Sitting up like a circus dog. Oh, that's great. Barker, Barker, come on. Now sit up like a circus dog. Come on. Sit up like a circus Yay. dog. Sit up like a circus dog. What a good trick. And I think probably they even maybe Tom Zarelli would like one. Stand up like a circus dog. <laughs> he yeah, ate it all up. He ate it all up. Hoka, come on. Kanga dog. Kanga dog. She's shy on TV. <laughs> well, anyhow, so that's it. Your handy uh, doggy treat, remember all it is, is a little leftover dog food, some Coca-Cola maybe, any kind of liquid that you have left over around the house. Orange and juice is good. Real vitamin C is what the Granulated sugar, it's what the dogs love, and they'll just mm -hmm. come running for miles, and they just you adore see. you. When Look, the cat's of, even coming in. The, the cat cat's some. even coming in, too. So maybe we could see if that's maybe Bud would tip. like one too. That's a happy dog. So I guess that's uh, probably it for uh, our American music yeah, show tonight. Yeah, he liked them uh, too. Patsy, did Bud enjoy his? Mm -hmm. Enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> and so we'll be back next week, I guess. Next week we're going to New York, so we'll have special reports from New York next week. Patsy won't get to go again. Make six dozen tickets.